God. You know, that's how I would react. I would always go to the extreme. And the ultimate extreme was one night we was in Chicago, and uh, we were in a restaurant, and uh, there was a football player named uh, uh, Daryl Stingley. And Daryl Stingley, you know, he had got paralyzed from the neck down by another football player named Jack Tatum. He got took a hell of a hit. He got paralyzed, you know, which is a very tragic thing, you know. So Daryl Stingley was having to come to this restaurant we were in, and in that time he was a celebrity, and he still had, he had a whole bunch of girls with him, you know what I'm saying? But you know, my brother was in there with the tight leather on and all that. <laughs> Daryl Stingley, you know what I'm saying? He, was, he, he couldn't move, man, you know what I'm saying? He's over here. So just, let me give you an idea of what was going on. We at our table chilling, right? And the girls with Stingley, they was paying a little bit too much attention to my brother. So we didn't call it hating back then, but Stingley started hating, man. The motherfucker, he's like this. Fuck Eddie Murphy. Fuck that punk ass nigga shit. I got money. Fuck y'all keep looking at this nigga for. Fuck him. Fuck Buckwheat. Niggas corny anyway. I don't like Beverly Hills Cop. It's going on and on and on and on. Loud, man, if the whole restaurant can hear it. No one is saying anything to Daryl because, you know, as a, you know, as a culture, you know, as a society, it's kind of wrong to step to this guy, you know? But, you know, like I told you, man, I make my own rules, man. Fuck that, man. If you're a talking head motherfucker and you acting like you forgot that that's what you are, I'm going to hold a mirror up and let you see what's going on. I went over there. I told him, I said, look, man. You want me to flip your fucking chair over? Huh? And stomp your mouth? Because that's the only thing that's moving. You want to lose that? Huh? And he looked me in the eye and he said, I was, I was that, that serious. I was going to flip that motherfucker's chair over and stomp his mouth, man. And he, he got horrified. I said, I'm going back over to my table. If I hear one more peep out of you, man, when I come back over here, I'm going I'm to fuck you up, man. Now shut the fuck up. <laughs> and you know, then his eyelids was trembling, but that's the only thing that can move. Smoke it. And he was sitting there and shit, you know what I'm saying? So I go back to my seat and I sit down. My brother was like, yo, man, wait, that was messed up, man. I said, you hear him say anything wrong about you anymore? Yeah, that's how messed up it is. You hear any more Eddie Murphy's a bitch, fuck Beverly Hills Cow? The nigga silent, right? That's how it's supposed to be. He's supposed to be enjoying his meal, shut the fuck up over there and eat his meal. That's what he's doing there. And the, and, and the girls that was over there, you know, they was quiet. And I heard one of them say, Daryl, you're not eating anything. He had lost his appetite. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sorry I ruined his meal, but he wasn't ruining mine. The response of, you know, the fans would be so tremendous as it turned out to be. And this is also that took the place of the cheers that, that, I, that I wouldn't hear eventually because my career was cut so short. After that night, after the way that people responded, responded, it, it sort of served like a, a launching pad of sorts. So it made me be a little bit more comfortable with myself, I guess, and the public. So I like charged up my daddy, got me ready to go back out into the world and try to make something of my life. Daryl Stingley today provides an inspiration far greater than he ever could have dreamed. I guess you can look at me now and tell that, uh, that I'm doing just, just fine.